let's talk about smartphones. So I've been an Android user for the past 9 years now with my current phone being the Huawei P20. Thinking back, my first Android phone was the HTC Incredible S. Back then it was one of the most reliable phones in the market, single core but gets the job done. And sadly I threw it out in the beginning of 2020 because the battery started to swell up and I haven't been using it. Fast forward. So the last month I was given the opportunity to use a, a interesting phone because it's not like all the previous phones I've used before. Because this one is the iPhone 12 mini. But the catch is I've only got 24 hours to play with the phone and I've got to return it after sadly. So let's dive right in. Please note this is a general overview, not an in-depth review, not a guide, of somebody who's been using Android for the past 8 years and trying out the new iOS. This is the iPhone 12 mini. It's tiny in a good way, it fits all your pockets easily, it doesn't weigh a ton, and it looks really, really good. I had the chance to try the green colour one. It looks not bad, but the blue is an absolutely gorgeous blue. I mean, look at that. As we know, the iPhone 12 isn't cheap, even for the mini version, but it's a premium phone. Well, as I said before, the colors are amazing. I'm so impressed that not many companies are bold enough to make phones this compact these days. There is a lot of engineering feats that go into a small phone, and phones these days just want to get bigger and bigger. I'm not really a person to, that studies into smartphones, but the past six years, things have been going but this thing is small, it's so small and comfortable to fit into the pocket, it's amazing. You got two cameras at the back, I believe none of these are telephoto. The general UI, dark mode it is. Who doesn't like dark mode, come on. Coming from an Android, this isn't anything to shout about. Fair, it, it is not too difficult to do the swap these days, it looks like, um, through my experience, uh, if, if you're using Android for the past 5 years, using iPhone now, it is different, but it's not a big change in terms of the general UI. There are some changes, but it's not a big jump, if that makes sense. It's not like you're coming from a um, Nokia 3310 and you're jumping into a Samsung S20. I think that that's a big sort of um, gap in between. So the reason I set my sights on the iPhone 12 was because in the last six months, I was having a lot of frustration with um, the Android apps, that being with cameras or Instagram, with some gimbal camera apps not allowing me to shoot 24 frames per second, or with the Android Instagram app which is missing a few features like putting multiple photos within one story and inconsistent filters or effects that you can apply to your images, it just wasn't consistent. Other than that, we do have some other bugs like your text getting cropped from reels because the last thing you want is your footage looking different from how you initially seen your footage on the phone. And once it's uploaded to Instagram, the reels or stories, oh, you gotta take it down and redo again. And with no guarantees, it's the right one you do which is frustrating. The, the apps that you use, it's fairly similar to Android, but it feels more polished. However, I did find Google apps on Android seems to be much more refined compared to the Apple counterparts. Camera, you got the time-lapse, your slow-mo, your 4K, your 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 120... I can't recall, I'm sorry. That's the store if you can see it. So yeah, just testing the quality of this and see how we go. Driving. Now this is interesting because the driving experience I had with Android Auto has been a hit and miss at times with the Huawei P20 with occasional dropouts from the phone and also sometimes YouTube music not playing at all. You can drive halfway and suddenly it goes, connection drops out. Ta -da! Apple CarPlay on the other hand, everything feels a bit more refined, smoother. Um, using Apple CarPlay I've really had any um, dropouts from my phone, um, the music plays smoothly. I haven't had any, um, yeah, I haven't had any issues with it. However, I do have to say that the Google Maps seems a lot more refined still again on the Apple CarPlay. I know I said before that Android apps are not optimized well for Apple, but then again, like 
on Apple CarPlay, it works really, really well. And YouTube Music is the same for Apple CarPlay. The only um, downside, which is can be a bit of a good or a bad thing depending on you, is there is no like button for the YouTube Music to um, add it to your like song. Sometimes I like to sort of like a song on the drive because I'm like, oh, I want to come back to that song later and things like that. It doesn't happen on the Apple CarPlay version, which is a bit unfortunate. The sound for this size of phone is absolutely amazing. This thing, this phone, really. Packs a punch compared to all the other phones I've used in the past. The videos, however, I can't, I can't tell you whether it's good or bad, but I noticed something, the blacks are really, really dark compared to all the previous phones I've used. Like, watching the Tenet trailer, you can see, like, the dark jackets just, just look dark, black, into the void abyss. But I've never really had other issues with other phones, so for me, that was kind of like a small negative, in my opinion. And now the one major downside for me for the iPhone 12 mini and my Huawei P20 has 128 gigabytes it's not much when you think about it when you're filming in 4k or even 2k sometimes to have that USB-C port it's amazing because what I can do is can slap on my T5 Samsung and pretty much copy what I want from my phone to the T5 just like that iPhone 12 mini you gotta buy so many different accessories to go with it like you gotta buy a hub a lightning port um, converter and you gotta power the hub it's a bit messy unfortunately it's the lightning cables transfer speeds to the ssd as well that's another different trouble i know that apple is trying to take the wireless approach for many of their things but that's a really sad downside because i can't copy my files that quick and i do not have any other apple products to complement the airdrop systems it's just really unfortunate in terms of that so unfortunately i've only had 24 hours to play with the iphone 12 mini uh, i've been eyeing on phones such as the um, Samsung S20 FE, the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II, and that's one phone that really caught my attention because it's probably targeted to the more uh, entry-level filmmaking niche group, I would say, because I don't invest into a, a DSLR or a video camera yet because I'm not ready. So I've taken it a more simpler approach, a bit of a dumbed-down version, um, and try to learn smartphone photography, smartphone filmmaking. It's very different and I know there are so much more limitations when I'm using a smartphone to film. Having the opportunity to use the iPhone 12 mini to film gave me an insight that sometimes upgrading the latest tech doesn't make you, doesn't make your work better. It, it does sometimes, you know, by a fraction because you have this technology gap. But actually what's more important is we invest into the skills of ourselves, understanding um, the uh, basics of filmmaking, whether you need lighting, whether you need a bit more study into like, what kind of um, framing you can have, what angles you can shoot at, do you need filters and things. And it really made me realize that we often take this lazy approach that we think like, oh, the next lens, I'm going to be better at it. The next light will make my film look better at it. The next laptop, I'm going to be much better at my video editing. But at the end of the day, it's our skills. We have to work on um, improving our own skills at what we do because even if you can buy the most fanciest tech, if our skills are subpar, the results show for itself. And um, I just want to share this message to everyone that sometimes what we have currently it's actually for the better good because you have used your tools for such a long time that you actually know the quirks, the small things that um, are good for this project. And when you buy a new product, like let's say um, I'm using an, a phone and I change to a camera, I have to learn all the small, small things about the camera, all the um, sensitivities to it, all the quirks and things. Using your current gears, pushing it to its maximum potential is the most important because in a way you're saving the environment by not buying new stuff. When you reach that level where you go, you know, my current equipment, I can't really do it. I think it's that time where um, you sh we should actually start considering upgrading instead of going like, you know, oh, mine, with that I can do so much better. But what we have to do is understand the limitations of our current device, work within that 
um, aspect of it master the aspect of their limitations in the near future upgrade into something which is a bit different but complements it or upgrade into something which is slightly more broader in range or add a repertoire which is slightly different but complements what you currently have i think so i think i think that makes sense i don't know anymore that was um something which i wanted to share it was it's not really a reveal video it's more like i think we should really in our own lives we may not need to constantly upgrade um, phones, cars, houses, um, cookware, bakeware, anything but more look into ourselves and work with what we have. If you like the video, give it a like and if you would like to see more content like this, comment below or give this channel a subscribe. I'm doing a few more other things. This video has been um, delayed for quite a bit. I will see you all in the next one. I finally managed to record it today. Yes, and it's done. Ludwig Goransson. I'm sorry if I put you the name. Absolutely amazing.